In today's video, I'm going to go over each one of these settings and give a few examples of what you might use them for. And if you haven't purchased that meter yet, we'll head on out to Radio Shack. Radio Shack? Why did I say Radio Shack? Well, anyway, head on out to like Walmart or Granger or even order it from Amazon. And if you're not sure which meter to go with, stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to go over a few things and might help you decide which meter will suit your needs the best. And with that, let's head over to the bench and let's go over this multimeter. <laughs> We've got a few different types of multimeters here. This is your basic cheaper multimeter. You'll notice that the meter has individual ranges here and it doesn't have auto range. It has voltage resistance, diodes, and it also has amps. Like I said, it has your individual ranges. Let's take a wall outlet, which in the US is about 120 volts. So you'd be using your AC setting here and you always go up one from whatever voltage you're expecting. So here we'd use the 200. Now another factor to consider is your min maxes. So for this one, even though this is my cheap multimeter, you can still read 600 volts AC and then it also has for your amperage this one is 10 amps max next up is your fluke 101 it does have auto range that's why you don't see all the numbers in between the meter will auto range that for you this one also has voltage millivolts resistance diodes frequency as well as continuity this is an analog meter instead of having a digital readout you have to set your range manually here and then read the analog scale here depending on which scale you're using over here next up is your fluke 87 now this is a true rms meter it is also auto range so for today's video we are going to stick with the more expensive fluke 87 the first setting we're going to try out is the volts ac voltage is represented by a capital v such as that and you see the wavy line above the v that means it's alternating current or AC. The most common use for the volts AC check around your house is going to be to check your voltage coming out of your outlets. Now we'll want to do this with one hand not only because I'm holding my multimeter but for safety it's always best to handle electricity with one hand when testing if possible. So just the red in one side, the black in the other. You'll definitely want to not touch the metal probes and as you can see we're getting 121.5 volts AC. Okay, the next setting we'll go to is the volts DC. Now, the volts DC is represented by another capital V, but it, now it has a straight and dotted line over top. So, a common use for the volts DC check, especially around your house, is going to be for checking various batteries. And on the battery, it shows you which side is negative and which side is positive. And this is true to most batteries. So, when checking DC, your black probe is your negative and the red is the positive and we're getting 8.71 volts on this 9 volt battery so for our voltage checks we're going to have the black always goes in the common and you'll see there's actually three different red ports for our voltage checks we're going to be in the one that says the volt ohm and diode jack so the next setting is the millivolt and you'll notice it has the same solid line and dash line underneath it so that's millivolts you would use the millivolt setting to measure very small voltages so just use the millivolt test the same you would as the DC voltage test now we've come to the resistance and continuity setting so first we'll use the resistance setting now the resistance in electricity is the resistance of current flow in the circuit so we use this to measure how much resistance is on a circuit or you can also use it to test out individual resistors now keep in mind if you are checking an individual resistor you will need to remove at least one leg from that resistor for proper checkout okay so this is a pretty small resistor but we'll test the resistance of this sticking a black lead on one side and the red lead on the other side and we're getting 0.968 thousand ohms while staying in the resistance setting we can hit the little button that looks like a sound wave and that turns on continuity and now when we touch our leads together it makes an audible tone to show that you have continuity. And continuity in electric circuit is basically the two sides are touching. So if we hook up our probes again, one to each end, 
we have continuity and you can hear the solid tone. The next setting we're gonna talk about is the Hertz or frequency. So in this meter, it's the Hertz button with the percent sign. So we'll put it into the volts AC setting and then we'll put our Hertz. And the reason why we use volts AC is because you're getting the frequency off of an alternating current. So for the frequency or Hertz check, again, using one hand, we will insert the red and black probe straight into the wall socket. And here in the US, we get 60 hertz, so that's pretty close, 60.01, definitely within tolerance. Some countries use 50 hertz, so you may get that reading instead. Our next setting is going to be the diode setting. That's the one that looks like an arrow with a line. A diode is a component in a circuit that only allows electricity to flow in one direction. To check a diode, you're gonna have the red probe on one lead and the black probe on the other. And in one direction, you're gonna get OL. If you flip the diode over, so the red and black leads are switched, you should get a reading. It will be something in volts DC. If you get a reading in both directions, or an OL open in both directions, then your diode is bad. Our next setting is going to be the orange capacitor, and that's the symbol with a straight line, and you have a curved to a flat line. Now, the capacitor setting is most likely going to be used to check an AC start or run capacitor for your air conditioning system. To check the capacitor, we're first going to flip it to the capacitor setting, and we need to hit our shift button. So this capacitor is rated for 80 plus or minus 5. So we're going to go across our compressor to the Herm tab. We're getting 79.8, which is not quite 80 microfarads, but it's close. It's definitely within that 5%. So it is good. And that's how you check a capacitor. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're checking a live capacitor, maybe on your AC system, these things do store electricity. So be very, very careful. Always discharge across all your tabs before handling it. That way any stored energy in the capacitor will be depleted before you test. You don't want to shock yourself. So now we'll move on to the milliamp and amp. And you'll see in the white, there's a wavy line. That's for the milliamps AC. If I were to hit the orange shift key, it will switch to amps DC. So to start out, we're going to check the milliamps amps AC here. And what we'll need to do, we'll swap our red probe to the amps all the way on the end. And we can check the amperage on a battery in the DC setting and we have about a half of an amp there on this 9 volt battery. Now for AC amperage checks we'll have to shift it back to the AC that's the wavy line. Now to check an AC circuit you're going to have to insert one lead to the power wire disconnected and the other lead will go to where the power wire was disconnected from. So you're essentially putting your meter in series with the disconnected circuit. Now the last setting that we're going to talk about today is the micro and you can see the meter is actually warning me I'm in the wrong socket. So now that I'm in the micro amps socket it stopped beating. So that's a handy feature on this meter. It will let you know if you've got it plugged into the wrong port when you're checking micro amps. That's because if you were to hook that up uh, to a much higher amperage it potentially could ruin your meter and in the microamp setting, you're going to be testing very small amperages, but it's used just like the regular amp setting. It's just for much smaller amperages. So you have your wavy AC in white and your solid orange dash for your DC. The shift button moves it in between the two. Now another option for checking amperages, and actually this is much safer because you don't have to disconnect anything from the circuit. You simply clamp this around the wire that you want to check the amps. As you can see, you can test the AC amperage there. You have temperature, you have your diode, you have your resistance and continuity again, and your volts AC and DC. So, so this, the Fluke 324, which is primarily a clamp on ammeter, is another option. You just insert your red and black leads to the bottom, and you can use this in itself as a multimeter, and then you have the much safer amperage check with the clamp. Now you also have the temperature setting, which is the orange thermometer there. You need to be in the millivolt and then hit your shift key. When you start out, it's open. That's because we're not touching our probes together. 
As soon as we touch our probes together, it is going to read the temperature in the area that the probes are touching. One more feature some of the more expensive meters do have is if you're working in the dark, which sometimes does happen when you have to shut power off, this meter does, and a lot of them do have different light settings, off, dim, bright. That'll just help you out when you're working in the dark. So one more thing I wanted to go over was just all the different measurement letters that you're going to see. So here in volts AC, I have nothing hooked up. You're seeing a small m that's milli and the big v that's volts so that's a thousand of a volt and the big v and volts dc of course that's just whole volts now you have the capital m which stands for mega so mega ohms that's the horseshoe or the omega symbol so right now nothing hooked up we're open which means there's infinity ohms now that could change to a small m which would be milli ohms or even the little u symbol which means micro ohms. It could also have a K, which means kilo ohms, which means thousand. Of course, the A for the A above the AC there stands for amps. And if you have an M for capacitance, you'll see there is a little N that's for nanofarads. And then you also most likely will be measuring microfarads, which is the small U. So you have nano, micro, milli, kilo, and mega. So as you can see, there are plenty of different meters for you to choose from. The main thing is make sure you choose a meter that will not only fit your needs now, but any of your future home projects that you may need more of those settings for. If you found value in today's video, please subscribe to the channel here and watch our next video here.